So check out this video with Tim Noakes and the Low Carb Crew. I'm about to have two, three vegan wraps for lunch and I'll probably have some more. Just had a big banana smoothie this morning, carving up. Beat you, Drew, it's all sorts. Carving the fuck up. Tim Noakes and a lot of those other low carb gurus say that the body doesn't need any carbohydrates at all. So you can never have pizza again in your life, pasta, nice ice cream, beautiful succulent tropical fruits. <laughs> No for you, no carbs. Check this out. Humans have absolutely no requirement for carbohydrate. Not one gram do we require. I love my fruit. I love my wraps. This is so good. And I love a good vegan pizza. A big, thick, crusty based pizza. But fruit, how fucking good is fruit? But you can't eat fruit in a low carb diet. Maybe you can have a blueberry or two, maybe three if you're running a marathon that day. Otherwise, you've got to eat goat scrotes, bison brains. Blend it up. Humans have absolutely no requirement for carbohydrate. Not one gram do we require. You've got no need for carbohydrates. No more coconut water for you because coconut water contains sugar. Yep, too much sugar in there. So, I've been talking with Tim for a while. Timothy Noakes, famous author. Famous author in running scenes. And he says that we don't need carbohydrates, not one gram. Well, how come Tim said this email? He eats 25 grams of carbohydrates per day. Tim eats 25 times more carbohydrates than he recommends per day. He says we don't need a single gram. Yeah, he eats 25 grams, 25 times his recommended allowance. We have this fabulous liver that produces as much glucose as you require. So Tim's talking about glycogen, which is stored glucose. It's a medical term for stored glucose in your liver. Yeah, and it's also stored in your muscles, mostly in your muscles, then liver, and a little bit in your blood. When your glycogen level's down, boom, you fucking crash. You can't think straight, you can't perform, you can't do fuck all. So Tim's saying, we don't need any carbohydrates. Your liver will make the carbohydrates magically. That does not fucking work. That's called ketosis, and that's why every single athlete on the planet, every single human, even if you're not athletic, if once you're in ketosis, Mentally, you're a space cadet. He says in explosive events, when you need a fast fuel source, then carbs will help. Which goes against what the paleo people say. They say, no, only endurance athletes need carbohydrates, but sprinters, powerlifters, that's just pure fat. But Timothy Noakes, he's got that right. It's fucking pure sugar. When you sprint, that's glucose-derived ATP. That's power. You try, and, you try and fucking sprint when you're in ketosis, nothing's fucking happening. You try and lift a heavy weight in ketosis, nothing's fucking happening. You try and wrap your body weight in the bench, ketosis, nothing's fucking happening. You try and sprint up a hill on a bike or on the flat in ketosis, in fucking possible. But for endurance athletes, you can last just as long by burning fat for fuel. Once the event lasts two or three hours, I don't see any advantage to carbohydrates. And then increasingly you burn fat. And the more fat you eat in your diet, the more adapted you are. You can burn an enormous amount of fat if you're an elite athlete and easily cover really good performance running very fast. But you have to become fat adapted. He notes is so fucking undercarb, he just contradicts himself. He says you need carbohydrates to run fast as a sprinter, but then you don't need a carbohydrates if you run really, really fast on ket ketosis and no carbs. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck are you saying? It's like, you can drive your car really fast going forwards, and then if you steal your feet and you're going backwards, you can go really, really just as fast as well. It's like, no, 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 not the real world, buddy. You're not in the real world. You're like in undercarbed, zub zub worlds. Insane craziness. Tim lives in Africa, and he, the, the ABC is showing footage of high carb sprinters and they've got some moron on there, Tim Noakes, undercarb idiot, promoting his low carb diet, and they're using high carb athletes as an example of low carb athletes. What the fuck? That's just such misleading content. ABC, shame on you. Finney has no doubt that burning fat for energy instead of carbs gives endurance athletes the winning edge. For athletes attempting to do prolonged endurance performance, if their body can be trained to use that fat as their predominant fuel, that fuel tank is more than 10 times as big as a carbohydrate tank. And that's why we see the ultra endurance athletes now, not just winning races, but setting records on low carbohydrate diets. And then we have another huckster, Dr. Finney. 
This guy is a fucking, oh my god, this guy is just a, like a dirt bag in the low carb world. This guy is saying, and again, they're using footage of a Kenyan 215 marathoner in the Sydney Marathon recently, and they're using footage of the Kenyan marathoner who's fueled on corn, high carb diet, and, he's, and as just as he's crossing the line at 215, Finney says, and they're setting records and winning races. How fucking missing is that? You just fucking used a high carb athlete, a Kenyan. I've trained with the Kenyans, I've eaten with the Kenyans, they're in Thailand. Carbs. It's corn, corn, rice, rice, sugar, sugar, bananas. Corn, sugar, rice, bananas is what the Kenyans are fueled on. And and Finney, you're fucking serious, bro? Where the fuck are the elite runners winning big races on a low carb diet? No carbs, low carbs, no carbs, in ketogenic state. Fucking zero. You talk about Timothy Olsen, the ultra marathoner. Read his blog, man. He's sponsored by First Fucking Endurance. First Endurance, what is that? That's a nutrition company that sells refined sugars and gels and stuff. Timothy admits his favorite race fuel is gels, man. Gels, sugar. Timothy Olsen fueled on refined sugar, and you're using one athlete example, using Timothy Olsen, the sugar athlete, as an example of a low-carb elite runner. I'll tell you what, you get the, you get the prize money to these ultra-marathons, and you get those Kenyans turning up, they'll be finishing three, four, five, six hours in front of the best low-carb ultra-runners around. So, Tim, uh, Finney, get your hand off it, bro. Endurance-wise, it actually makes sense to be using fat as for your fuel tank, which is good for many hours, but when you need that high power output to sprint to the finish line or to, to ride up the hill, as an athlete, you actually fall behind because that's when your body needs carbohydrates for maximum energy output, and you don't get that. So luckily, they had some person with some fucking idea on nutrition. They had a little sports nutritionist do for AS to say, hey, look, low-carb diets, Basically wank and if you want to perform at a high level, you definitely need carbohydrates in your system at all times So thankfully they had someone some rational person on there So I didn't have to gouge my eyeballs out in frustration. So now watch this all three of them go out for lunch and have a little uh, little low-carb lunch and then check it out People go, well, no, they're, not, they're not obese, Holly. They're eating a high-fat diet. Look how much they're fucking eating. Look, look how big the fucking plate is, mate And what's that fucking little dimple in the middle? That's where the food goes? Fuck having that little food and then watch the ABC reporter Straight away after lunch, she's got a cup of coffee. Why? Because she's got too much fat in the brain, can't think, and not enough glucose to fuel the brain. So, oh, I'll get some coffee. I'll put some sugars in there. Just don't tell anyone. I'm meant to be done a low carb diet. Low carbohydrate diets are naturally higher in fat. We've got some liver, we've got a little bit of heart, and of course, some beef mince from grass fed cattle. And it tastes so good because it's so nutrient dense. Because, you know, Pete, we're always fighting this argument that food like this, because it doesn't contain grains, must be nutrient deficient because it has liver in it, it would be far more Wow, looks tasty, not look how little the journo's eating. She's like, oh this tastes like dog food. Ugh. More nutrient dense than anything that was grain based. Now we know that there's no one size fits all approach when these people don't metabolize carbohydrates well. That's what diabetes is. It's a failure to metabolize carbohydrates. And yet we've traditionally given these people high carbohydrate diets. I mean, it just does not make any sense at all. I think both in the treatment, but also in the prevention of type two diabetes, if we reduce the amount of carbohydrates in our diet, we will have a massive impact on type two diabetes, which is in epidemic forms. So we have this cricket coach guy all of a sudden, he's a nutrition guru. Well, hey, brother, dude, how about you bring up your buddy Tim Noakes, love a low-carb author, and say, Tim, how come your diet's giving you type 2 diabetes? Because I'm on the ABC on the other side, and I'm, I'm trying to say that this cures type 2 diabetes, and you've got type 2 diabetes. Let's check out this email that Tim sent me. So here we have Tim Noakes has type 2 diabetes. He's claiming it reverses type 2 diabetes, yet he's not publicly letting people know he has diabetes in a mass media format. But he tells people, if you ask Tim Oaks, Tim, do you have type 2 diabetes? Do you require uh, diabetic medication? Tim Oaks will answer yes. In this email, he answered me yes. I talked with Tim a few years ago. And I said, what's your blood sugars like? He says, well, at this rate, I'm probably going to be a diabetic medication pretty soon. So Tim Oaks has type 2 diabetes, yet he has the goal to get on public camera, mass media, whatever, and say, 
This diet will cure type 2 diabetes. And Bruckner says the same. They parrot each other. But one of them's got type 2 diabetes. And I bet Bruckner, I bet Bruckner's on the diabetic medication. Doesn't make him bad people. But if you're claiming your diet cures type 2 diabetes and you have type 2 diabetes, that's like saying your marketing campaign cures uh, debt and you're in debt yourself. It's like a get rich quick scheme, but you're broke as fuck living in the gutter. I cure type 2 diabetes. But my diet gave me type 2 diabetes, the same diet I'm promoting to you. Both these guys need to read Dr. Neil Bernard's book. Here's a copy here. On the, look, Google it up. Dr. Neil Bernard's Program for Reversing Diabetes. Actually got some clinical studies in there. Where's Tim Noakes' clinical studies on reversing type 2 diabetes like he claims? Where's Bruckner's... Nah. Zip, 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 dada, nada, nothing. ...them problems. This diet is really not necessarily for everyone because there are many people who can handle the carbohydrates. It's only the people with insulin resistance and diabetes for whom it's a immediate problem and for whom they get immediate benefits. For whom they get immediate benefits. So we have the slime bag Finney just a minute ago was saying, yeah, this is a low carb diet, no carbs is like the best ever for everybody, athletic performance, yeah, it's the best ever. Now he's admitting, well, actually it's not for everyone. And the only really people who really benefit is uh, the people who are like, you know, insulin resistant. Um, so he just contradicts himself. He just, he's so under carb, he contradicts himself within like 30 seconds to a minute of interview. He's saying, oh, it's the best for athletes. Actually, no, it's best for like overweight people. I'll tell you about the Finney. Read Dr. Neil Bernard's book. Learn. Learn what creates insulin resistance. It's excess dietary fat and protein in the blood, in the system. Get Dr. Neil Bernard on the phone, give him a call, he'll answer your call and say, Bernard, I've been doing all these studies, I'm just trying to like rub off Robert Lustig's little magic genie for financing, but uh, it's not really working too much, I'm still broke. Do you got any advice I can help my clients with type 2 diabetes? Bernard will give you some help. He'll tell you to carb the fuck up, Finny. If you followed this diet, we could reverse obesity and type 2 diabetes. So here's the wrap up. Basically, with this low-carb diet feature on Catalyst, we had three main speakers. One of them, Tim Noakes, type 2 diabetic, admits he has type 2 diabetes. We have Bruckner, I'd like to see his blood test. We have Finney, who claims his elite-level athletes doing low-carb diet, winning big races, setting records. Where are they? Where's their daily diet vlogs? And they have, the only athlete they have is Tim Olsen, Timothy Olsen who is sponsored by a sports supplement company, and he even admits on his blog, he doesn't even do a low-carb diet. But you have Finney using Tim Olsen as a low-carb, and Tim on his blog says, I don't even eat low-carb diet. And my sponsor is First Endurance, where we have gels, and I love drinking Mountain Dew. Not exactly low-carb, Finney. So there you go, it's basically bunk, but what it does is it tells people good things about their bad habits, so that show aired in Australia recently, and a few million people saw it, people go, yeah, well, look, I eat more bacon, I can be like a elite athlete and like, you know, yeah, mate, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some more bacon, please, mate. That's what it does, is it just tells people good things about their bad habits. And the journalist, she just gets paid, she fucking say whatever. You know, journalists are just puppets. They don't have an opinion, they like, their opinion is what the corporations tell them to think and say. So you can't rely on journalists like that who are paid just to do whatever. You know, there you go. So that's the bottom line, debunking. Total hustle, scam, bad for your health. Telling people good things about their bad habits.